Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have as usual a few announcements. First of all, next week starts the first class of the weight loss certification course. Now you can take it live with me teaching it via teleconference. Listen to the recordings the next day, we house those for a couple, three weeks, and then I'm going to video, videotape the lectures after I give them so you can watch them on a video platform, or you can do all three of those things. So if you're interested in taking that course, let me know. The failure of weight loss programs is notorious. It's over 99%. So obviously new ideas are needed. We're going to try and present some, okay? Um, we've posted some new lectures on the vaccine site, so those of you who are subscribers, make sure you log on and watch the new lectures. Um, and then a lot of interest in this um, in uh, the Gerson lectures. I uh, covered an advanced study last month, a cancer therapy by Max Gerson, and um, we had probably more response to that than we have had to advanced study lectures for a long time. People are very curious about the Gerson therapy. That also has been videotaped and is placed on a video platform. So if you missed the um, discussion and the live version, you can watch the lectures based on the book and also with some updates that um, talk about Gerson today and uh, what others have to say about it and the research and controversy about Gerson therapy. And then last but not least, if you live within driving distance of Columbus, you should spend this Saturday, March 5th with us for our first uh, Food Over Medicine retreat. We have guest instructors, Kathy Worley, capable instructor of ours from Mount Vernon, Dr. Lana Contos, founder of Operation Healthy Girlfriend. Uh, we are partners with her in that endeavor. And um, your ticket includes breakfast, lunch, snacks, education, cooking class, fun. It'll be fun, I promise. So um, come spend the day with us. We promise you'll leave inspired. All right, let's get down to business here. Pancreatic cancer is one of the more deadly cancers. It's fatal almost all the time. Smoking and obesity have been linked to the risk of uh, pan pancreatic cancer, but like all cancers, pancreatic cancer is very prevalent in populations that eat the standard American or westernized diet. So you can look at a map of the world and pick out the places that eat like we do here in the United States, and that's where you're gonna see the highest risk of pancreatic cancer. Um, particularly saturated fat is an issue, but all fat, increases the risk of uh, pancreatic cancer. So in a recent study, researchers, researchers followed 500,000 people for an average of six years, and during that time, a little over 1,300 subjects developed pancreatic cancer. And um, the research showed that men who consumed the most total fat had a 53% increased risk of pancreatic cancer compared to men who consume the diet's lowest in fat. And for women, the rate was 23% higher uh, increased risk of cancer. Overall, patients consuming the highest amount of saturated fat had a 36% higher rate of pancreatic cancer. But the study also showed that the, the amount of total fat, saturated fat, and mono and polyunsaturated fat mattered also. The authors actually wrote, quote, we observe positive associations between pancreatic cancer and intakes of total saturated and monounsaturated fat overall, particularly from red meat and dairy food sources, but notice they mentioned um, plant fats too. So in other words, consuming better fats is not protective, eating a diet low in all fats is. The author suggests that the relationship between fat intake and pancreatic cancer might be related to the fact that the pancreas secretes enzymes needed to digest fat and that overworking the pancreas might be a factor. But the relationship could also be due to the fact that high fat intake is related to insulin resistance. The accumulation of fat inside the cell, which is called intramyocellular fat, makes cells more insulin resistant, and insulin resistance and diabetes are both risk factors for pancreatic cancer. Now this might uh, blow your mind a little bit, but research shows that about 80% of pancreatic cancer patients have glucose intolerance or diabetes. So if you wanna not get pancreatic cancer, you wanna look at all the risk factors that you have for becoming a type two diabetic and address those. So people who already have diabetics should be advised that they are at very high risk of a lot of other conditions, including pancreatic cancer, 
which just may provide some additional motivation for them to change their diets, their lifestyles, lose weight, etc. You know, prevention is always the best option, but since there really are not good options for pancreatic cancer patients, as I mentioned earlier, almost all of them die, prevention really is the only option that we can talk about in terms of favorable outcomes. <clears throat> all right, so moving on to another topic. Many women who've had a mastectomy are told that they should restrict their activities in order to not cause or aggravate symptoms of lymphedema. It's a painful swelling that occurs where lymph nodes have either been removed or received radiation treatment. The incidence of lymphedema resulting from breast cancer is high. It's at about 83%. And it's considered one of the most unpleasant side effects of surgery because affected women have trouble doing everyday things like taking care of their children, cleaning their house, or even getting dressed, which can require lifting your arms up over your head. So historically, as a result of this, women have been told that they shouldn't participate in aggressive exercise, lift anything heavy. Uh, some articles and, and websites have cautioned women against even carrying a heavy purse. And um, because all of this can make lymphedema, it can cause lymphedema or make it worse. Well, research is showing that that is really bad advice, that restricting physical activity can worsen their condition, and that exercise and weightlifting can prevent and improve symptoms of lymphedema. In a study of 141 breast cancer patients, all of whom had already developed lymphedema, half were told to follow traditional advice to avoid lifting anything heavy, while the other half were told to start engaging in uh, progressive and progressing uh, weightlifting. The women assigned to the weightlifting group had fewer complications than the women given traditional advice. They also gained strength, while the women in the traditional advice group actually lost a lot of strength. In an accompanying editorial, um, it was stated that the current guidelines should be replaced by recommendations for both exercise and rehabilitation, since many women are forced to ignore the guidelines anyway. I mean, a lot of people have to clean their house, take care of their children, maintain some jobs which require uh, lifting things up or the ability to have some physical strength. Um, so it's not an option for some women to just not pick up anything or, or not engage in physical activity. Our fitness division has worked with breast cancer patients who had lymphedema, lymphedema for a good number of years. And um, some were told that they would never regain function and they did. And what's interesting is that in some cases, the patients were actually stronger and more fit than they were prior to having the mastectomy. They were better than before, not just as good as before. So aggressive activity, preferably under the guidance of a, of a, a good qualified trainer, is great medicine for breast cancer patients as a means to avoid or aggravate symptoms of lymphedema. All right, well, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.